Hello students, we are into a new chapter, name of the chapter is uh, Analeptics. Analeptics are drugs uh, which are uh, CNS uh, stimulants. Before uh, going into the actual topic, Analeptics, so let me um, explain you uh, about the brain and its parts because anale analeptics are seen as a stimulant that is central nervous system stimulant. The cent central nervous system um, contains uh, mainly brain and uh, a spinal cord. Uh, coming to the brain, brain it contains mainly three major uh, parts. One is a uh, cerebrum. Cerebrum is uh, uh, most part of the brain. The next is uh, cerebellum. Cerebellum um, is the smaller part and uh, lies just underneath the uh, cerebrum. And then we have brain stem. And brain stem it originates uh, like as shown here. Um, comes uh, underneath from the cerebrum and it continues and it continues as a spinal cord. Right? Here in this part uh, we'll have that uh, medulla oblongata points etc. And then this brain and uh, uh, all, all parts, of, uh, parts of the brain they will have these centers uh, like the hearing center, a smell center, speech center, motor control, then uh, touch and pressure, taste, vision. They will have all these uh, parts, uh, controlling the parts. And uh, here medulla oblongata, it will have the center called respiratory center, which controls the respiration. So here, uh, Mainly their functions are cerebrum, it uh, helps in remembering, problem solving, thinking and uh, feeling and uh, cerebellum, it helps in coordination and balancing of the body and then brain stem, it connects the brain to the spinal cord and controls automatic functions such as breathing, it has got the breathing center, digestion, heart rate, and blood pressure. It controls uh, all these. That is the uh, brain uh, stem. Now, let's uh, consider uh, the actions of a CNS stimulant and CNS uh, depressant uh, drugs. Now, suppose we the brain will normally under uh, uh, you know, in normal normal condition or the stable condition, right? Suppose uh, you are going to give a uh, give an agent or medicine which stimulates the drug. We will study both. Uh, um, one which uh, stimulates the uh, brain means it excites the parts of the brain. It acts on the brain, um, and there uh, there are drugs like which uh, depress the brain which depress the brain. Let's see what are their actions in general. See, uh, let's take the example of uh, um, caffeine, coffee. Uh, caffeine uh, is in, uh, coffee contains caffeine or tea contains uh, a caffeine. This caffeine, it's a, a stimulant, a stimulating agent. It's a mild, mild stimulant, okay. Now, uh, we can take caffeine as an example here in uh, a CNS stimulant uh, agents. So what it can do? So it can it can produce wakefulness. If you are like sleepy, if you are like sleepy, it can produce uh, wakefulness. It can produce uh, alertness. It can you know to some extent decrease the fatigue. If you fatigue in the sense of tiredness, if you feel like you are you are tired, so it can help you uh, come out of that little bit. Um, it can decrease fatigue. 
increased ability to concentrate to some extent it can help you um, uh, with the concentration right and then um, now these actions are not other actions are not with the caffeine with other uh, CNS stimulant uh, uh, drugs uh, they can increase motor and speech uh, activity motor in the sense of your muscle and bone um, uh, movement uh, uh, as well as the speech uh, activity it can increase it can uh, the CNS stimulants they can produce uh, a euphoria it depends on which uh, drug it is not all of them do the same thing it depends on their concentration and euphoria is uh, something like uh, feeling of uh, happiness or uh, well-being uh, so it can produce uh, that uh, suppose uh, for an example you uh, get an award and um, in that situation we, you are very happy right so that uh, condition we can call it as a euphoria condition and certain drugs can cause this condition a uh, euphoric uh, condition so CN stimulant can increase the blood pressure uh, it can increase uh, uh, anorex anorexic action anorexia in the sense person um, having phobia or the fear of uh, getting a fat if he or she eats uh, eat food some people you know they are scared of eating food much of the food they don't eat much food because they think that they will get uh, Effect. So that condition um, is an anorexic condition and CNS uh, stimulant they can produce uh, insomnia they won't let you uh, sleep you know you will be um, awake uh, all the time so that condition is called uh, insomnia so higher doses of this CNS stimulant they can cause uh, convulsions they can cause uh, um, uh, make you your body a uh, shake uh, so that is called as a, a convulsion so CNS depressant they produce exactly the opposite uh, action so instead of wakefulness uh, they can produce uh, drowsiness they can make you sleep so instead of uh, fatigue uh, decreasing fatigue so they can produce a lethargy or tiredness they can produce a, a tiredness that's the opposite right of this uh, CNS stimulant uh, action and then they can produce anxiety right the fearfulness uh, you know and then they can produce uh, mental depression it should be mental here they can produce a uh, mental uh, depression Right. they can produce unconsciousness means um, the unconsciousness condition is uh, something you are not conscious uh, you, you will not be like in a, a wakeful uh, condition you will not know what is going on around so that is a uh, unconscious uh, state it can it can take you to that condition it can produce uh, narcosis. Narcosis again is uh, unconscious and uh, a drowsiness uh, condition. And then uh, it can produce respiratory depression. It can uh, uh, lower your uh, respira respiratory uh, respiration rate. So you, it can produce the uh, breathlessness then it can produce general anesthesia anesthesia is again unconscious general anesthesia is unconscious condition of the whole body you will not know what's happening with the body if you are in anesthesia condition it can uh, produce coma right coma is uh, you know the complete uh, anesthesia and uh, coma is also a uh, critical uh, condition right the next stage to coma is actually death the person can die uh, if he is in severe uh, coma condition so these are the actions of uh, cns stimulant and uh, 
uh, CNS depressant drugs. Now our analeptics, uh, they come into picture here. So analeptics, uh, they can act here. They can um, they can be given for like for drowsiness, uh, lethargy. These two conditions they can be given. And there are analeptics uh, which are given for this condition, respiratory depression. Now we will uh, go into definition of uh, analeptics. So analeptics are CNS uh, stimulant drugs and they are used to reduce narcosis uh, produced by CNS uh, depressants. So that's um, what I discussed here, right? So they can produce uh, CNS depressant drugs, CNS depressant drugs, they can produce uh, narcosis and uh, Analeptics are used in such conditions and there are another types of uh, analeptics they are used um, some other analeptics stimulate the respiratory center right okay, uh, here again CNS depressants they can they can produce respiratory depression right respiratory depression so analeptics can be used in that case uh, when there is a re respiratory depression here actually analeptics are used uh, when um, general anesthesia is uh, produced see general anesthesia is produced using cns depressant right then the person will go to um, respiratory depression after uh, this uh, Anesthesia is given to perform the surgery, right? To do the surgery on the body. Uh, general anesthesia uh, will be uh, created on the on the person. So when the surgery is over, so person has to uh, come back to the normal stage, right? So in that case, uh, there will be respiratory depression in case of this uh, general anesthesia and to bring it back to the normal stage they are going to use uh, analeptics so those are called as uh, um, you know uh, respiratory stimulant respiratory stimulant and they are also called as respiratory uh, analeptics right so it is done after uh, general anesthesia so this is something I already discussed. They stimulate the CNS. They stimulate the CNS in large doses. So with that, they can cause the convulsions. All right. Now let's go for the classification of uh, analeptics. So analeptics are CNS stimulants, and uh, we are classifying the uh, CNS uh, stimu uh, stimulants here. So first classification is naturally occurring uh, drugs in that we have uh, alkaloids. So there is only one, it's written A here or, and uh, you don't have B here. It's this uh, like A here, this only one type of uh, uh, natural, naturally occurring drugs uh, is given here. So alkaloids in that the uh, subcategory xanthine derivative, xanthine derivative caffeine is uh, caffeine and the theobromine and then uh, theophylline so these are uh, xanthine derivatives which are uh, analeptics then the other alkaloids we have other than uh, xanthine alkaloids so the, those are uh, strychnine and uh, lobulin so these are all natural products uh, which are uh, analeptics coming to the synthetic drugs we have uh, niketamide it's a, a pyridine derivative and then picrotoxin. So these are synthetic drugs. Those are uh, analeptics. The third one is uh, miscellaneous, uncategorized um, agents or drugs. We call them uh, miscellaneous. So here it comes uh, cocaine. Um, it's a local anesthetic. You're going to come across this uh, later. Then that's Dexamphetamine, uh, it's a sympathomimetics uh, uh, drug. So, we are also going to come across this uh, sympathomimetic drugs. And then atropine, atropine is anticholinergic drug. Again, we are going to come across this uh, 
um, anticholinergic uh, drugs. So this is the classification of uh, uh, analeptics. Uh, now let's uh, we have to uh, study certain uh, drugs here. Let's go for the uh, our first drug that is uh, caffeine. Caffeine you already know it is uh, obtained from tea and in tea it is obtained from tea leaves. It is obtained from tea leaves and they can also use other parts like uh, um, uh, tea leaf stem they can use and uh, maybe other parts are, are used here. In coffee, coffee seeds are used. We, we drink coffee and uh, the coffee is obtained from coffee uh, seeds actually. So these they will have uh, uh, caffeine in it and then uh, we can also get them from dried leaves of uh, camellia uh, sinensis right so apart from this we can also synthesize this uh, uh, caffeine in the laboratory coming to the uh, structure and IUPAC name uh, this is the structure and uh, as you can see it has got purine ring this is actually purine ring. Again, this purine ring has got one. This is pyrimidine ring. This only depends in like structure here. This is a pyridine ring. This is pyridine ring, and this is a imidazole ring. This is imidazole ring with the two nitrogens each and they are joined together and they, when they join so that is a purine ring now for this purine ring again you have here these are uh, lactone lactone like structure and this whole structure this whole structure is called as a whole structure with this uh, oxygen here keto groups over here that is called as xanthine to this xanthine you have one two three methyl groups are attached and they are attached at position one three and seven so numbering starts from here one two three four five right and then we have seven eight nine so here is the sixth position here is the sixth position this is seven eight and nine at position one at position one and then at position three and, and at position seven we have a a methyl group that's why it is 137 trimethyl xanthine. Alright, coming to the properties, it occurs as white crystalline powder. A pure caffeine will have uh, a will be like this. The one which uh, we use is not a pure uh, crystalline uh, caffeine. So pure crystalline caffeine will have white crystalline, you know, it's white, white, and it is crystalline in nature, and it's a, uh, it's a powder, or it can also have silky white uh, crystalline uh, nature. It's odorless, you know, it is bitter in taste. So it can have a molecule of uh, water in crystallization in the crystal when it forms the crystal the uh, water is part of that uh, uh, crystal form so it can be uh, the water can be part of a uh, caffeine crystal so it's sp sparingly soluble in water and slightly soluble in uh, alcohol stability and storage it uh, it is decomposed by strong solution of costing uh, alkali so in room temperature nothing is going to happen so it is stable in uh, room temperature so it can get decomposed by strong solution of caustic alkalis alkalis are uh, bases like sodium hydroxide uh, potassium hydroxide 
and it is uh, you have to use a strong alkali strong uh, caustic in the sense strong like you have caustic soda right strong alkalis are called as uh, caustic alkalis so its salts are decomposed by water it, it is in salt nature so that is decomposed by water so hence it is stored in tightly closed container you have to um, store in tightly closed container label should be here um, whether it is anhydrous or uh, monohydrous in uh, nature so anhydrous uh, in the sense no water molecule in it uh, monohydrate means uh, having one molecule of uh, water so the label should contain whether it is uh, uh, anhydrous or a monohydrate. All right, coming to the uses, it's a CNS uh, stimulant, hence it is used in, you can imagine the uses of uh, caffeine, right, so it can produce state of wakefulness if the person is drowsy, it can bring him to the uh, wakefulness, it can enhance uh, mental activity right the person can you know get alerted after drinking coffee or tea right so that's the uh, use of it and then uh, to get relief from a fatigue or a mild depression person is uh, mind mildly depressed or fatigue or tired so it can relieve the person from that so it can cause insomnia in moderate doses if person is in sleepy mood so it can uh, wake him up it can that means the opposite of sleepy mode is uh, insomnia somnus is in the sense it is sleepiness so, so opposite is uh, uh, insomnia that is wakefulness it has a weak diuretic at, uh, activity if you drink more of coffee or tea so you will have to uh, uh, go to urinate right so so it, it's a weak diuretic uh, uh, agent so it can produce more of urine so but it is mild in nature um, as a diuretic in combination with ergotamine it is used to get relief from migraine My, uh, ergotamine is one for the headache especially in case of a migraine condition so it is used to get relief from migraine so uh, analeptics or caffeine um, this caffeine is uh, also comes with combination with the, the drug called ergotamine which is anti-migraine uh, drug so it is generally given in combination with the aspirin or codeine codeine is a uh, narcotic drug uh, it is mainly used uh, in case of a severe pain you are going to come across this later so aspirin is uh, aspirin it is given in the combination of uh, aspirin right caffeine plus uh, caffeine plus aspirin and then also caffeine plus uh, codeine combination is there and they are given for uh, analgesic activity analgesic in the sense uh, one for the pain analgesia so as an analgesic agent one for the pain it is given in the combination uh, with the aspirin and codeine it also stimulates the respiratory uh, center so once you uh, drink coffee you know um, your breathing um, rate can increase uh, to some extent but it is only the a mild effect uh, you need not have to drink uh, coffee for you know to get better uh, breathing it's only mild effect you know it goes goes off uh, uh, pretty uh, soon so these are the uses of uh, a caffeine then let's go for a pharmaceutical uh, uh, formulations so it comes as caffeine and aspirin tablets so these are the these are the brand names anacin and colderin they are the combination of aspirin and 
combination of aspirin and caffeine combination of aspirin and caffeine those are available in the market then caffeine and sodium benzoate injection uh, combination will be there and these are um, um, used for uh, respiratory depression in certain cases they use this combination and uh, it comes as a uh, sorry it comes as a caffeine iodide elixir elixir is a liquid uh, um, uh, formulation right then it comes as a caffeine citrate a tablet so these are the formulations it uh, comes as and then uh, Brand names are Anacin and Colderin, which are a combination of aspirin and caffeine. So this is about caffeine. Um, that's all for today. And uh, we will continue in the next class. Thank you very much. And let me know if you have any questions.